In this video, we're gonna take a look at sending an HTTP request to an API to fetch data and display that on our page. So if I give this a refresh, you'll notice that we have a little loading symbol and then the data loads in from this HTTP request. You can see that in the network tab in Google Chrome. And in fact, we can see a better example of this if we simulate slow 3G and load this again. So you'll notice that it takes a little bit longer, but we have the loading symbol and then we have our data loading into the page. We'll also be looking at dynamic route parameters to make this happen. So if I were to load product four, then we'll have a completely different product loaded in. Now, before you can follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need to have a JSON API that you can connect to and fetch all of the JSON data. So if you wanna learn how to create your own API, I do have a complete tutorial series on how to do this with Laravel, and that is a free course. So I will link to that in the video description of this video, go ahead and take a look at it. And you'll learn how to uh, create an entire project that will return any data you like. And of course you'll be able to store data, etc. But for the purpose of this tutorial and keeping this tutorial accessible to everyone, I'm going to show you a great free resource, which is called mock API. And what this allows you to do is set up a bunch of mock APIs. In fact, you only have uh, one free one, but that's fine. That's perfect for this video. And what I'm gonna do is log in and let me show you the API that I've set up for this video. So I've just set up a product list with a bunch of products and those products have some images. Now, if I take a look at my data, I think let's click the edit button there. Uh, this is the setup that I have for this tutorial. So I've got products and we can get products with a specific ID by adding that to the URL. We've also got post, put and delete requests if we wanna uh, put some more data, like edit data in the database and delete data from our database. Then these are the columns that I have on my API. So we've got an ID, we've got created at, we've got a name, a material that the product is made out of, a price, and all of these are generated with fake JS. So it's just generating fake names for us and fake prices. And then we also have a uh, images resource, which is a child resource and that is just this resource down here. So if we were to take a look at a specific product in our database, uh, we can visit API v1 products and then the ID of that product being four or let's just say, let's look at the third product. Uh, and this is the data that we have returned. Now that you have an API to connect to, the next thing we're gonna do is open up a new file. So I'm gonna create a new file called product.js and this is going to be the product page for our app. And I'm just gonna paste in some standard React boilerplate code here. And the next thing I wanna do is head over to app.js and add that product page over here. So we'll add that in and this is going to import the product component. So we just need to make sure that we import that over here as well. And so now let's just change the path. So we're gonna access this uh, product by accessing the URL products. And then we're gonna add in a wildcard to the URL by adding a colon and then the name of the wildcard that we're passing through, which in this case is gonna be an ID. And if we save this now, we should be able to access our product on the products URL and then adding a ID to the, to the URL as well. So ID three, ID two, whatever. And that should give us back the product page. Of course, we don't know we're on the product page just yet. So let's add in an H1 just to say uh, that this is the product page. And of course, now we know we're there. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at replacing this data with the actual name of the product as the heading. Uh, but in order to do that, we first need to send through a request to our API to fetch all of this data. In order to send that request, we're gonna make use of an HTTP library called Axios, which is just a yarn package. So we can copy that uh, command and we can come over to our terminal and yarn add Axios. 
And now that you have Axios in your project, you can go over to the file you want to use this in and import Axios from Axios. And what we'll do is we'll use Axios to send through one of the HTTP requests. So you can use Axios to get, to post, to delete, or any one of the different types of requests available. Uh, but in this case, because we want to fetch data from our API, we're going to be making use of a get request. And this get request takes in a URL. So what we want to do is we want to take in this URL and we're going to paste that in here. Of course, to clean things up a little bit, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constant and uh, this constant will be a URL and we'll set that equal to the string version of our URL up here. Uh, so let's maybe just close that so we can see that a bit better. But that is the uh, variable. And so now uh, what we want to do is Axios get that URL. And once we've got that URL, this is actually going to return a promise. So we can chain on a then function. And this then function can uh, give us back the response from that request. And we'll run a function on that response. And on that response, we are going to set a variable. So what I actually want to do is I want to create another state variable up here. So we'll call this uh, const uh, product. So we'll create a product variable and then we'll create a method for setting that product called set product. And we're going to set this equal to the use state function from uh, react. And we'll default this to null. So by default, our product will be null. But once we've sent through this Axios request, we're going to set product to the response dot data. So we're going to get the response data from our request. So if I save this now and go back over to our project, uh, you'll notice that we could, uh, well, first of all, you'll notice in the network tab, seeing as I have that open, uh, we are sending through a request every single second. And this is going to get a bit much. Of course, you don't want to <laughs> be doing this. So this is a massive bug. But the reason why this happens is because we're making use of this Axios request inside of our product function. So what we need to do is we actually need to cut that out. And we need to make use of that inside of another React hook called use effect. So I'm going to add that to my project. And we're going to make sure that that's imported up here. And then we are going to set this to an arrow function. So uh, this arrow fun or this um, hook actually takes in two arguments. The first one is a function of code that we want to run. And then the second argument is uh, a variable that we want to monitor. And if that variable ever changes, then that's what we want to use to rerun the request. So for now, we can add in the URL in here. And so now if this URL changes, that's when the code within the effect will rerun. So what we'll do is we'll paste in our Axios request here. And when we save this now, we should have our network request only running once. And we should have this uh, set product or we should have this data in set product. So I can try output that in my template down here by outputting the product name. And of course, if I save this now, we have a huge error, cannot get property name of undefined. And that's because our product first loads in as null, and we're going to return a template that's trying to use the product name. So what we need to do in order to get around this is we can create an if statement to check if there is actually uh, a value in product to check that there's actually data there and then return our product name. And then we can also have a default return down here of uh, just an empty div. So we can grab this and paste that in, but remove the heading with that data in it. So you'll notice that when I uh, actually save this now and we refresh, there is a brief second in which there is no data. And then we have the product name output. So we've got this template first, and then we actually have this template. Another way to get around that is to also just create a variable called content. So we can say let content equal null. 
and then we can output that content variable down here. But in the if statement, we could uh, change content to be the, uh, the content that we wanted to return, which in that case was actually the uh, div with the heading that I wanted to output. So in fact, let's actually just grab, well, yeah, let's grab the entire heading and change that variable to be this. Okay, and that basically does the same thing. Now we can access the rest of our product data and create a little template. And what I've done is I've already prepared a little template for us. So I'm gonna just paste in that JSX. And the way I'm getting all of these uh, variables is if we take a look at the request over here, you can see we've got an ID, a name, a material, a price. So these are all things that I can access. And in case of the images, this is actually an array. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting the first image in that array and then getting the image URL on that uh, image. And if we look at that in the data, I'm actually just returning a Pixum image, which returns a random image every single time. Uh, so uh, whenever I save this template now, uh, we should have uh, our product and then we should have a random image. And every time I load the page, of course, that will return a different image. Now the next thing we wanna do is we actually wanna look at making this dynamic because the problem is whenever I access this uh, product URL, it doesn't matter if I'm using the ID of one or the ID of four, I'm always getting the same handmade granite t-shirt and that's because we've hard coded that ID over here into the URL. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna create another constant and we will call this the ID. And in fact, we're gonna make use of JavaScript destructuring. So I'm going to uh, create a variable here called ID. And I'm gonna set this equal to uh, another hook, which is called use params. And that is a hook that we get from the React router DOM. And what this allows us to do is, uh, well, it will just return all of the uh, URL parameters up here. And in this case, it will give us that ID. So we'll get just the ID from those params. And now we can make use of that ID over here at the end of our string. So I'm going to uh, paste in a little dollar sign ID, but then we need to surround the rest of our string with back ticks instead of quotation marks. And so that will allow us to use a variable in the string. So if we save this now, we should be able to have a dynamic uh, variable in the string in the URL. So if I go to product two, I should have a handmade soft tuner. If I go to product one, I've got a different product, which is awesome soft chips. And if I go to product five, well, I have gorgeous cotton pizza. So uh, we're now getting a dynamic product every time we change the URL. And I think that's where I'm gonna end this video. Don't forget that you can download the code for this tutorial on my GitHub page. And of course, if you guys like this video, then please subscribe, uh, watch another one, consider pledging to me on Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next video.